Hey everyone, we're back again with day four now of Schlage Week. We've been answering all kinds of interesting questions and talking about all kinds of cool, obscure history, right? So we've talked about multi-section keying, we've talked about all the different classic keyways and how the SC20 or L blank will fit in them. That's why people are gaga over the new SC20 style Lishi 2-in-1 pick. We've talked about the very obscure super multiplex composite P keyway and whether or not the pick will work in there. It will, it's got a little bit of wobble, but it's, it's functional. But throughout all of this, some people have been asking, and you know, even down in the comments, we're starting to see some people scratching their heads. They're like, wait a minute. Much like the old question, how come you never see B batteries or single A batteries, right? Some of you have asked, why does it start with C, right? Why is there no B keyway or A keyway? Well, people who are old enough and have been around the lock industry for long enough will tell you it's, frankly, a lot like A and B batteries. Uh, sure, they exist. They're just older. There are, in fact, artifacts of them still out there in the world. Like, you can find pictures of A batteries and B batteries, right? If you find old enough collections or people who've been in the industry for ages, you'll find people who've gone hands-on with these products before. So they were once popular, but they've been discontinued. You know, that's, that's how it goes with a lot of things in life. So when Walter Schlage designed the original lock that would really start to kick off the company, this is back in the 1920s, right? Some of you, in fact, are aware of this because you watch other lock people online and you have people with collections, right? The Schlage A lock originally used a wafer-based core. And it's a really obscure, cool kind of product. It is vulnerable to some manipulation and picking, of course, but that was the very first A keyway, right? Now, of course, as the company continued to achieve success, they wanted to make many A series locks, right? Not talking about the A keyway, not the wafer mechanism. They eventually, obviously, as we all know, switched to pin tumblers primarily. But the A series product line, I mean, that's still something that Schlage produces, that exists. It's been around for ages. That's different from the B series. When we talk about they have a whole B series of products, those are deadbolts. Uh, you've seen me like recommend the B560, right? So we know about these older designs that they exist, but not all of you have seen them before. So I wanted to do something cool for you. I reached out to my friends in the cylinder division and I said, hey, can you go through the archives? Can you take a poke at some of these discontinued products? What can you show me? And sure enough, they sent over some old blueprints. This is the A series keyway as it was originally made in the 20s, right? This is the B series keyway. This is the first pin tumbler keyway that was ever on a Schlage lock. Like, isn't that cool? I love this. So there you are. There's no great mystery to it. The A keyway and the B keyway, those are older models. They, they predate the design of the now ubiquitous C keyway. Uh, they have long since been discontinued. That's why you don't see them. That's why you don't hear about them. But wait a minute. We always hear about the C keyway. I mean, it's like the most ubiquitous keyway. And when they made the rest of this product line, they kept adding letters, but they added E and then F, and then G, and they said, oh, we really need more room, we need to add more stuff, let's start using double letters, C, E, and E, F. Why is there no D keyway? What's going on there? So yeah, the D keyway. Why is there no D keyway? It's puzzled me for years, and I've asked people in various you know, contexts, has anyone ever seen a D keyway? No one knew. I finally got an answer. They looked through the archives. I was talking to my buddies over there at Allegiant, right? They found it. It's still in the files. You know what the D keyway was? It's this. That's right. Recognize it? It's a mirror image reverse of the C keyway. You've never seen it because it was never released publicly. It was only ever used on Schlage properties and Schlage facilities. It was for their own internal purposes, to be special, to be different. How cool is that? And you can imagine how they made it, right? Anyone who knows uh, anything about machining and production, right? Uh, if you've never seen it, like this giant Giuliani machine, this is one of the machines uh, at Carmel, I think this is probably in Indiana, uh, when I was at the Schlage factory, right? And it's for broaching the plugs. So you load a huge bunch of plugs in this tray and you slap it shut, and this machine just chon 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 chon, and it pushes it through a series of dies to to make the keyway. Uh, that's why keyways are broached all the way through the plug. You're never going to have like a blind hole in any kind of plug design for the most part. So that's how they do it. And if you could imagine, right, loading the the blanks in backwards, the billets of metal, you get additional complexity for free, effectively. 
Uh, you don't have to spin up new tooling. You don't have to redesign new hardware. And the Giuliani company, they're still around. They're still making lock hardware. They're from Italy. Uh, but this is like, this is a vintage machine and it's still kicking because really good high quality tooling you can use for a while if you treat it right. So instead of spinning up and replacing the tooling, a lot of lock companies have done this over the years, by the way. The idea of making a reverse keyway is not a new idea. So you have Corbin Ruswin, right? You have their L series and their D series, the one through four, right? Those are just reverse image keyways of each other. Uh, Yale, Yale did this. So the famous Yale number eight keyway, the, when the government needed locks for post boxes, they turned to Yale and Yale did the reverse Y1, or they call it the Y1R, right? It's the, basically, it is just the reverse keyway. And you couldn't order those blanks, by the way. They were considered super restricted in the US because they were government blanks. I, I talked about this with this old mailbox that I restored ages ago. I turned it into a kind of lock picking win liquor competition by making all the locks in it harder and harder as they progressively get down the way. But to take it all apart, to rebuild it, I had to source reverse Yale blanks. And I couldn't in the US. I had to buy them from JMA, it's from Spain, right? So the idea of using a reverse keyway for security or to be special, it's not new. I just had no idea Schlage ever did it. So I love this stuff. I love the idea of going hands-on with history. I love, this is, this is why I watch the YouTubers who I watch. Uh, this is like Robert Dunn, right? Aging wheels, if you don't follow him, he actually finds these obscure old cars. He either has them in his collection because he's crazy or he goes out to museums and archives and other enthusiasts and he drives them around and talks about how they perform on the road. Carl, my, my buddy Carl from InRange, he goes out to battlefields and he goes out to locations of slave revolts and where there were street battles and things. And he talks about they would have gone down this alley and the, this property used to have a porch on the back of it. And that's why the story is the way it is today. So there's no substitute for being there in person or for touching an artifact hands on. Uh, you know, how many of you watch Alec, right? Technology Connections. He goes out and buys sometimes multiple of these obscure old technologies of home electronics and other you know, equipment and appliances to just to take them apart and showcase them. I could never hope to be as cool and as intelligent and as great as a lot of the creators I admire, but I wanted to tell this story. I wanted to share this story in the vein of how they do it, showing you the real bits of history that have contributed to what we have today and sharing it out there, putting it out there, I think is important. Because if we don't talk about stories, if we don't talk about these fascinating things, they get lost to us. Uh, so if you know of anything cool, again, I, I always, why do you think I always do all these giveaways and, and say, I want to see what you have to say next? You have knowledge inside you of something obscure, something you're so geeky about and you just love to nerd out about it and no one you think will listen or care. People will care. Um, put that together. You know, put your camera on a tripod, throw some cheap Amazon lights in your room. Uh, you know, you don't need a whole furry wall behind you and subscribers and free giveaways and other shit like that. Just just tell a story of something you're passionate about and people will love it. I'm just, I've having a ball, honestly, with putting this content together and I'm really enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it. And to make you enjoy it more, uh, we do have more giveaways. So if you're not familiar, uh, the mailing list, you know, again, it's not a mailing list for announcements. It's really just an emergency list like CGP Grey encourages this. So I did it a while ago, but it's also the giveaway list. So I talked to Bosnian Bill about how he does it. He's like, oh yeah, just make people give you a real freaking address so you can send them stuff. So if you're signed up and you used a real address, I will send you things. Specifically, uh, in this case, pinning trays, prototype pinning trays. So I have a number of designs that I have put out over the years and I've kind of worked on and uh, Jimmy Longs and other people helped me with some tweaks to additional pinning trays. One of these days, we'll talk about why my pinning trays have separate slots in them. But if you would like one in 3D printed plastic, or if you would like one in very nice milled aluminum metal. So courtesy of another person up in Canada who is maybe gonna produce other metal things. I'll tell you more about that later. You can just sign up and one of you, uh, two of you, well, one of you will win this, one of you will win this. And I just wanna, yeah, I just wanna keep you all smiling and keep you all learning. And I will see you tomorrow for the conclusion of way too much Schlag content. I hope you've been enjoying it. If you're bored by it, you know, let me know down in the comments. As what does Drew always say? If you like this video, click that thumbs up button. And if you dislike this video, be sure to click that thumbs down button two times so I'll know you're really serious. All right. Keep having fun, everybody. Stay safe out there.